in the heart of Baltimore, where the city's pulse echoes through its streets. We dive into the life of a young radio DJ and musician breaking barriers and creating waves in the local music scene. It's your boy DJ Razor Roman on one and twos right now. Shout out to Rapids Digest, you know, the only place to find your music videos. Right now, me rocking with just non-stop hits right now. So without further ado, let me bring this next gen right here by Brent Fayez. Meet Rasha Rom, born Jerome Sheldon Jr., a rising star whose journey began in the vibrant neighborhoods of Baltimore. From the first beat, he knew that music will be his guiding force. Okay, as far as music, um, as, as long as I can remember, I've been listening to my parents' music. They're, they kind of gave me like a good um, base when it comes to like my music taste and selection. Mm -hmm. My mom is from Baltimore, Maryland. She listens to a lot of house music, club music, R&B, hip hop. Uh, my father's from Liberia, West Africa. So I was exposed to African music and I had that kind of a background. Um, I feel like with African music and house music, they kind of call you to dance. That became kind of the type of music that I'm into. Um, music that kind of creates a vibe. So from a young age, I can just always remember dancing a lot. Um, me and my brothers would always dance for hours and hours. Um, so when I got to college um, and I was kind of getting exposed to more people from different cultures and kind of finding commonalities with like the different people and the different music, um, they were kind of shocked to know the, the different music that I knew. Um, so. That's kind of how I started making music and DJing. Explore the diverse and rich musical landscape of Baltimore that has shaped Russia Rom's unique sound. Through interviews with some locals, we uncover the city's influence on his craft. So this is like a huge industry. Yeah. Uh, tell me about your kind of songs. What uh, inspired? First of all, what's your genre of music? Uh, hip hop. Hip-hop, rap music. Got my locations, black design in my closet is racist. Competition, you thought we was racist. Where I'm from, if you make it, you take it. Why the f is you hating? Took a trip out to Vegas. They gon' think that we play for the Raiders. AMG and it look like a spaceship. Off the cast and that shit wanna taste it, so I let it taste it. Just to be clear, I ain't him or him or him or him. Bitch, I ain't one of them. Shit like a remix, we spin, we spin, we spin. You spin, we spinning again. Okay. Like melodic rap. You know, kind of songs that you rap and kind of sing along to. So, you know, with different flows. Uh, I changed my cadence a lot with my with my music. Um, and I kind of got introduced to that. Just listening to the old school rap music, kind of noticing um, the rappers now. I looked up to like Lil Wayne, um, Meek Mill. Those are kind of like my major um, artists that I, I paid attention to, but I didn't really mimic their style. I kind of brought my own to it, but um, as far as like rap, that's what I consider like good music. So from there, I kind of um, did my own thing when it came to making music. Russia Rome challenges norms, blending genres and pushing boundaries. We hear his tracks that reflect the electric mix of Baltimore's culture from jazz field corners to the beats of the streets. You know, from an African descent mm -hmm. and, you know, doing music or pursuing music here in the United States, yeah. I should think that you, you have some sort of, you know, inspiration yeah, coming from yeah, somewhere. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. Um, so, like, that's why I kind of brought in the melodic part because I feel like um, African music, a lot of times you just have no choice but to dance to it. It's like feel good music. Um, so that's why I kind of, like I said, brought my own flavor to it because I was exposed to African music. I do listen to um, African artists. Um, and so I kind of brought that to the, the side of the music that I make now. Um, and so like, I like making music that where you can dance to or you know you can move, you don't just sit around and listen to it. How many songs do you have to your credit? I have about 15, 15 to 20 songs out right now. Um, so. 15. Yeah, 15 to 20, uh, all on different platforms, all across, you know, the platforms. Um, so, I'm working on new music this year. It's going to be more so um, a different side of what I've already put out. Um, I'm still trying to create a sound or, you know, push a sound that I feel like is, is thriving right now. And that's with, like, 
African descent, I'm a piano, um, house music, trying to blend those two together. And I feel like that's kind of like a good sweet spot to start right there because it's definitely like who I am. So I, I think people are gonna, people are gonna like it when they, when they hear it, when it okay. comes all together, yeah. Okay, so uh, out of all your 20, 15 songs, do you have a favorite in there? Um, yeah, I would say my favorite um, will probably be Tapped In as a song, Tapped In. I'm tapped in, count money off the back end Spend a lot but I make more so I'm stacking She acting, but she be back then Now she using nigga songs for a caption I'm heating up, baby I ain't in my prime yet How to sell when I want all the smoke behind that You ain't no hitter boy, you afraid of contact You can still a watch but you can't never get your time back I love with the young dogs on top I'ma be a real nigga to a nigga hard stop Bitches making up stories cause hoes love to apply I did it to my life Tell me about Top Jack um, so that song, um, it was kind of like in the beginning stages of me starting to make music because I would, I would go with a friend, uh, my friend Wavy Reg, he's an artist. Um, I would just go with him to make music. Um, throughout the time there, they would kind of hear me freestyling and making stuff, but I always could, I just never recorded it. Um, Tap Them was a song that I said, okay, I'm gonna try to pursue a, a music career and actually record, you know, take it serious. And when I first played it for people, they didn't recognize how I sounded because it had like a, a, a melody to it. I was kind of singing um, and things like that. So um, that's kind of like one of the songs that when I hear, I, I dance to it, but I still remember like recording and how that process was. Um, so in what, way, in what ways do you think that your music resonates with the people here in the U.S., specifically Baltimore? Specifically Baltimore. Yeah. Um, I think Baltimore as a city is like a really they really like a dancing, like we like we like to dance. Okay. Um, a lot of times the beat will catch your attention, but the words will keep you. Mm -hmm. So um, I like to throw you know different phrases in my in my music, metaphors, stuff like that. But with the beats that I, I select, I select it with that in mind. That if I heard just this beat, would I dance? Would I get up? Um, so that's kind of like where it resonates. Like we do this dance we call it's called the Park High Strut, um, and that's kind of like. You can do that to a lot of the songs that I, I make as a, one of the common dances we have, so. Come along as he takes us behind the scenes of his radio show. Discover how Russia Roms curates the perfect playlist and connects with the community through the airwaves. Boy DJ Razor Roman the ones and twos right now. Shout out to Rappers Digest. You know, the only place to find your music videos. Right now, me rocking with just non-stop hits right now. So without further ado, let me bring this next joint right here by Brent Fires. Let's get it. E Vibes witness Jerome's commitment to uplifting the community. From performing at local events to mentoring aspiring artists with his show, Rapper's Digest, he becomes a catalyst for positive change. You're from Liberia. Yes. You know, we have a lot of music genres coming out from Liberia. I'm from Ghana. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of music genres coming Definitely. out from yeah. you know, Ghana, Ghana, this Nigeria somewhere in the Cote d'Ivoire yes. and all of that. Uh, uh, on a larger scale, we're all looking at Africans, you know, crossing the, the borders with their music, with mm -hmm. their sounds. Are you, do you have any plans of, you know, adapting any uh, sort of sounds that could resonate with the people back home yeah, in actually, Africa? Yeah, um, so I have some unreleased music, um, stuff that I've been working on towards the end of the year. Right. Um, that have some some Emma piano sound to it. Okay. Um, the the bass and the the percussion to the songs are similar to the stuff that's hot now, especially in Africa. It, Africa, I feel like as a sound has always been something you just can't help but dance to. And I noticed that early on. So I just I just think that now that it's getting more shine in the states, they're kind of late to the party. It's always been that way, you know, with African music. So I'm kind of putting a stamp on it in a way that it can kind of go both ways as far as being successful here and being successful there. Yeah, that makes good sense. So, uh, 
well, you speak well. Uh, it looks like you know a lot about music yeah. and you know African music, both well, African music and and foreign uh, music here uh, that you listen to that other people listen to. Mm. So my point is, uh, you've listened to all these. Comparing these, you know, two uh, continents, what do you make of music in Africa? Uh, I make of music, which, which is, you know, having you wanting to go back there, right, yeah. you know, yeah. and sort of uh, network with all these people, with beautiful people honor. back home. Um, I, I make it so that I feel like African music as a whole is just feel good music. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, people think about. Uh, when they think of African music, they think of like vacation. They think of uh, feeling good in a good time space. Um, I definitely want to get back to, well, get to Africa. Um, I haven't been there yet formally, but I plan to go on definitely this year. But that'll be like a, a nice like homecoming for me, being as though my father's from, from Liberia. And um, I got so many uh, people that I know that are from Nigeria, Ghana, that kind of exposed me to music there that just kind of sparked my interest. Um, so I just think of African music as like feel good music, just stuff, music that you, even if you don't know the, the complete track, you know, you, you just feel good hearing it, it keeps you up spirit. Do you have names? Uh, yeah, I got a couple. Um, I know first I was listening to DeVito before, you know, early on. Yeah. Um, Burner Boy is hot now. I got put on to Stone Boy actually towards the end of the year. I was hearing about him on tour, the, right. the fifth, the fifth, fifth dimension, dimension, yeah, the fifth tour. dimension tour. Yeah. And I kind of picked up on him there because I was surprised, you know, I didn't I didn't know about him and that he was so big. So I was just like, wow, he's so talented. Um, and listening to his last like album. So that kind of told me like, okay, they got artists all over Africa um, doing big things. Uh, Ghana uh, is definitely one of the places I want to go to when I, uh, Make my way over there. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> as long as I got your welcome. Oh, of course, you're, you're, you're welcome. Well, yeah. you, well, Davido, uh, you've got Burner Boy in there. You've yeah. got Stone Boy. Mm -hmm. Do you know any, you know, of the artists back home in Liberia? That you're... Um, I believe One Twelve. Uh, one Twelve. Yeah, One Twelve. Yeah, they're um, they're like they, it's like older though. It's older, but some of that music I listen to, of course, with my my dad. You know, taking trips back and forth from. From Baltimore to where he, he lives now in Georgia and listening to artists like that kind of um, kind of sits well with me because I'm from Liberia so I come from there so being able to have artists that are doing it big there too. Um, yeah. Every journey has its ups and downs but for Russia Rom the challenges in a competitive music industry strengthens him. How is your life as a DJ here? I, I, I want to understand DJs. Yeah. You know, back home, yeah. uh, the the industry uh, of DJs were growing with Mercury Quay leading the. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, he's called Mercury Quay. He's mm -hmm. leading the the, the baton, mm -hmm. uh, trying to promote all these DJs, making sure that DJs are heard, right. are celebrated, and are respected throughout the country. Right. Um, how, how is the life of the DJ like? So the life of, the, of a DJ here, um, I think they're respected more um, as far as by the by the fans. Uh, the artists sometimes think they, they can do it on their own and a lot of times you can. Uh, but I think DJs help push your music when you're not when you're not doing it. When you're away maybe in the studio, there's a DJ that could be playing your song in the club for other people who are at a venue. Um, I think as a whole though, DJs do hold a lot of weight, especially in Baltimore. Um, when it comes to events, when they know, oh, Ratchet Roman's gonna be at this spot, they're more inclined to come. You know, they know or they're familiar with that DJ's name. If you're like a, a powerhouse name as a DJ here, I think people come out. They may not even know what you're gonna play, but they know, they respect your opinion on music. You know, they expect your, your placement of what songs to play. And I think that is, how it, how it carries here. It's like, it's, it's respected um, as far as like the listeners. I think the listeners definitely respect it. And uh, what do you make of, of, of yourself, your, your life as a DJ? Um, I would say- How's it going? It's going good, actually. Um, it's just really busy, you know, <clears throat> being being here and here and in different places. I DJ throughout the week. Um, I have some residencies. I have a, a, a bar, Roses Bar and Grill. I DJ twice a week. Um, in Baltimore, Maryland, like downtown, Light Street area. 
Um, I DJ on the radio. So like the different things I'm into now as far as DJing keep me busy, but it's something I got a passion for, so it doesn't really feel like work, you know. So you spoke up a lot about, you know, infiltrating the African market, right. networking, collaborating yeah. with, you know, all these beautiful artists back home, Nigeria, Ghana, Liberia, Cote d'Ivoire, we're not living any African uh, country out. Mm -hmm. Don't you foresee any challenges? Have you thought about, you know, the whole process? If you have, how do you intend to you know, um, um, solve all those problems. I think the challenge may be just um, accepting, you know, that the, the, the overall goal. Um, some people may think that, you know, you're out for personal gain, like I'm just trying to be big. But at the end of the day, if I'm trying to help push, uh, help, uh, push a country sound or bridge the gap between both and, they, and people realize that, I think it becomes easy. Um, just networking in general, people being aware of, okay, he's trying to push, you know, African music here, or people, me in America, oh, he's trying to expose us to more sounds. I think the closed-minded people may make it an issue. You know, people that are just, oh, no, I just only want to hear this, or, oh, I'm big here in Africa, I just want to stay here. Those closed-minded people may make it an issue, but overall, the people just enjoy good music, and they respect your opinion on music. I think it, uh, uh, It'll, it'll be successful, and that's the that's the plan right now. That's the plan. So. Why do you place dancing in all these, and we're talking about? Because I mean, I know yeah. that. She, so you're DJ, mm -hmm. you're musician, right. rapper, right. and then a dancer. I mean, so I kind of mix the two, honestly. Well, I mix like two or the three at a time. So while I'm DJing, I'm one of the DJs that I play a song, but I step away from the booth and dance with dance with people there. I'm definitely known for that. Um, so with my music, when I do music videos, I'm dancing my music videos and things like that. But as far as doing more work where I'm doing choreography, stuff like that, I kind of channel it through my fraternity. Um, I was able to to perform halftime for the Lakers um, last year around this time. And so like we were at halftime, I performed there for, you know, the Lakers and the Golden State Warriors, the two basketball teams in California. Um, we performed there. So I kind of like continue to do things like that to, to keep me in that, that loop, like, keep me active. As we conclude, we look towards the future. What's next for Russia Rome? What new works will he bring to the city that continues to inspire his art? My music um, collaboration, um, basically taking advantage of the fact that people here, um, I'm familiar with what people here listen to. I'm in places where people listen to different music and kind of exposing them to there. And then also taking, the fact of, taking advantage of the fact that there's people in Africa doing big things. Um, and knowing, okay, now this is good music. This just got to get heard by the, the right person. And knowing kind of like what both sides like, you know, and just being a bridge between, you know, Africa and, and the States, or the United States. And in your own capacity as a radio DJ who uh, you, you hands on on music right. that comes in and out every day, um, do you think that the people he, out here uh, appreciates African music and how do you also in your own capacity tend to um, bring them out here and, you know make sure that African music or African artists are heard right. here in America yeah so um, the radio are you doing that already yeah yeah I'm already doing that um, in my I own heard capacity. that's why we're having this conversation yeah, right. I heard I heard that you're putting people on. I know that the so you speak so well of Stone Boy. Yeah, Stone Boy. Yeah, Sakodier was, yeah, Sakodier, was yeah, also. Yeah, yeah, we're speaking about yeah. Yeah, and it, so I'm. It made made me got really interested in, you know, what you're doing out here, trying right. to put African artists on, uh, yeah. big radio station as, 
you know, the one that you work, you work for? Yeah, so if 92Q Jams, um, I'm a mixer there. So um, just being a part of that, that radio station is like the major radio station in Baltimore and the surrounding areas. Um, they, they do a good job of reaching out to the DJs that, that mix on the show right. and ask us like for our opinions. Like, okay, this song is, what songs are we not aware of? Or, you know, what songs should we, should we you know, make sure we're playing? Um, and just having that background knowledge of, hey, there's an artist named Stoneboy, a soccer deer that's they're doing big things. Yeah. We just got to, you know, get it on a platform where people can hear it and be exposed to it. So I do think we appreciate music here. They just don't know all of it. You know the music that's going on they're kind of like stuck here and don't think really outside until it gets exposed to everybody but i think the music will be appreciated once it's once it's arrived here and that's what i plan to do that's, that's a good point so how do we get it in the music industry how do we get it in the because we know we're doing everything I, i'm sure all the artists are out there they can do everything iTunes and, right, and right, all of that. We put our music, you know, on all these platforms. Mm -hmm. They put in the work, right. but it looks like we are still lacking behind, you know, when it comes to African music. Yeah, I think um, it's just the exposure um, because just because I haven't heard the song yet doesn't mean it's not a great song. Mm -hmm. I think people just have to be exposed to the music here, and it's probably. To me, I think it's just about placement. If you hear it on the radio, you hear it while you walk into the store, you hear it in the car mm -hmm. passing you by, you hear it in the in the club or the party, that kind of gives you exposure to the song and then you look further and you may discover the artist, you know, just simple from one song. So I always think someone's one song away from becoming your biggest fan. If I heard um, Stoneboy for the first time, but before that, he was already making great music. Right. When I heard him for the first time right. and wanted to learn more about his music, I became a fan. It just takes one time to hear a song, and then you, you know, you kind of latch on to an artist. So I think that's the step, just the placement, and with the platform of 92Q, the radio station, I'm yeah. um, playing it on the airways. Um, with the platform of Rappers Digest, which is a platform that looks out for new artists all over the country, right. um, those placements can help uh, bridge the gap and kind of get people exposed to that. So what would be your life hack to you know the wonderful people that are watching us? I will tell you something that Denzel said mm -hmm. that has resonated with me for a very long time. He says that ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. Maybe you have to keep going right, even right. though you're not being paid well even right. though you're not being recognized enough even though you're you're just um you just feel like you're undervalued right and all the quote unquote nasty things that you might be thinking or terrible things that you'll be thinking that it's not working for you you just have to keep going because mm -hmm. at the end of the day progress will come it yeah. might not take today but you know we'll take tomorrow mm -hmm. do you have any life hack that we can probably some life hacks. Yeah, so live some, with for the rest of our lives some, some said by dj rashid wrong i would say um just what, what has been working for me is just staying true to what i what i decide is my my path when i when i get consistent on something i really want not selling for a no, not selling for oh it didn't didn't work this time. Just using that as an opportunity to reevaluate and think of another way to still get that same outcome. I think being true to myself and being consistent with that, I'm going to always end up in the right path. I may not it may not be the path that I thought of it was going to be, but I'm just not selling for a no, not selling for oh it didn't work this time. Uh, it's good to celebrate wins and celebrate accomplishments, but just not being complacent, kind of like the Denzel thing, but just not being right. complacent on. All right, I I made it here. I'm good. You no, know, you got to keep. Going. You got to keep going. You, it's it's good to celebrate it though, because sometimes people don't celebrate their wins, and that's how they get to a point where they feel like they got somewhere and they didn't really get anywhere because right. you didn't celebrate that journey. So it's good to celebrate, you know, your wins and your accomplishments, but not just get comfortable in that win. Just keep going forward knowing your path isn't just a, a end, it's, it's going to keep going, your path is going to
keep going forward and that's just how I how I've been successful or how I've been working things out for myself. Um, that's been working for me. So that's my advice to you all. Just stay consistent. Stay consistent. Well, I guess we're, we're also staying consistent here on Joy News, Joy Prime, uh, all the channels, beautiful channels that we have a multimedia group. Uh, thank you so much. Thank I you. have learned a lot from this acquired a lot of knowledge and thank you for the opportunity to you know have this conversation with you just so uh, you know we could understand and get to know more about uh, music here and thank you for the fact that you have it in mind right. to you know bridge that gap bring the African music or African sounds here uh, to to the U.S. and beyond. Right. beyond uh, it's not you know state just here, but we're looking at beyond, and also you know the life hack that you just yeah. gave us consistency. E vibes has been very consistent for three solid years, and we're happy to have you on board. Appreciate and we're you. also. Uh, looking forward to you visiting Ghana with all the beautiful places that we have in Ghana, all yeah, the beautiful wait. music that we have. We have DJs as well that right. you can you can meet back home uh, in Ghana, and yeah. so we're grateful. Just I can't, I can't wait. I'm, I'm I'm thankful for you all for having me. Um, Joy News, E Vibes, um, definitely appreciative of the platform. I love with you all have been doing um, and just taking the time to learn about me and my story. Um, definitely appreciative of that. So, thank you too. All right. This is a testament to the power of music, community, and the unwavering spirit of a young DJ and musician making waves in the soulful streets of Baltimore. Boy DJ Razor Roman on one and twos right now. Shout out to Rappers Digest. You know, the only place to find your music videos right now. Be rocking with just non stop hits right now. So, without further ado, let me bring this next joint right here by Brent Fires. 